everybody, it's Keith. I wanted to take a few moments and walk you through specifically what's involved in setting up a router on a stick. Here we have a router. It's got one physical interface that we'll be using. It's FA00. And our goal is to be able to take that one physical resource that the router has and subdivide it so that that one physical interface can be used to route between VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. Some of the prep work is already done for us. In the lab, we're going to go visit just a moment in Packet Tracer. The FA0 slash 1 interface, which is supporting the workstation on the left, that interface, FA01 on the switch, has already been assigned to be a member of VLAN 2. And the port FA02 on the right has already been assigned to be a member of, F of VLAN 3. So that part's already set up. Our focus is going to be the router itself and the actual switch port. The switch port FA0 slash 24 that goes up to the router, we're going to configure that as a trunk and then on the router, we're going to enable FA00 to do a no shutdown. And then we'll create two separate, distinct, logical sub-interfaces. One of those sub-interfaces will have an IP address appropriate for VLAN 2 IP addressing. And the other sub-interface will have an IP address appropriate for VLAN 3 IP addressing. And we'll also assign each of the sub-interfaces which VLAN tag to go ahead and pay attention to. So let's go to Packet Tracer and let's do this thing. So inside Packet Tracer, let's take a look at our PCs for a moment. We have this PC up at the top left. Its IP address is 10.0.0.10. Leave that up there for you. And its default gateway, if it existed, would be 10.0.0.11. I'm sorry, 10.0.0.100. That 100 IP address is what we're going to assign to the router. Down below here, we have the PC, the second PC. Its IP address is 200020, and its default gateway is going to be 200100, which also, in a few moments, will be the IP address assigned to a sub-interface on the router on the far right. These ports right here, FA0 slash 1 and FA0 slash 2 on the switch, have been assigned to the appropriate VLAN. If you take a look at the very top, it shows FA01 being a member of VLAN 2 and FA0 slash 2 being a member of VLAN 3. So that part's already done. What isn't done though is setting up the actual FA024 interface trunking out to the router and then on the router setting up the sub interfaces there. So let's go to the switch and set up the interfaces or the FA0 slash 24 interface that we need to. And move this over here to the right so we can see everything. So on the switch, we'll just go into configuration mode, interface FA0 slash 24, and we'll say switch port, trunk, encapsulation, dot 1Q. So if it does trunking, it's going to use dot 1Q. The second thing we need to do is tell it to go ahead and be a trunk. So we'll say switch port, mode, trunk. If we take a look at the interface, for FA0 slash 24, I'll put them right together so you can see them all. Here's the full syntax of what we just did. Interface FA0 slash 24, switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1Q, switch port mode trunk. So the switch part is done. The switch is willing to talk to the router, and the VLANs also exist. We saw that earlier. So VLAN brief. It's just another way of representing the fact that VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 are there, and they are assigned appropriately for the interfaces. That's client 1 and the workstation 2 on the bottom on the bottom left. So let's go to the router and enable the FA00 interface and we'll create two sub interfaces, one for VLAN 2, one for VLAN 3. So we'll bring up that router. We'll drag this over here so we can see everything as we configure it. And the first thing we're going to do is show IP interface brief just to see that we have no IP addresses whatsoever yet. And then we'll go ahead into configuration mode interface FA0 slash 0 and we'll do a no shut. And that'll bring the interface up. If you'll notice um, in the diagram the colored icon says now it's starting to come up and the switch is going through its listening and learning steps. That's fine for spanning tree. Now that that interface is in a non shutdown state we can go to interface FA0 slash 0 dot 2. Now 2 is just any number that's not used yet that I want to use for a sub interface. However I'm going to use dot 2 because when I see it physically or logically, I can know, hey, that's the interface I'm going to have pay attention to VLAN 2. Now, the way you do that is you say encapsulation 
dot one q two. That statement right there is what tells that subinterface that it is supposed to listen to and participate with any frames that have a VLAN two tag on them via dot one q. So then we'll give it an IP address. So we'll give it twenty dot zero dot zero dot oh not twenty ten. We need to give it the IP address of 10.0.0.100 because that's what the PC is expecting to use. And that's done. And now we'll go create another subinterface. We'll create subinterface. Let's go ahead and use 33 just to demonstrate that the actual number of the subinterface is just for our benefit. The actual magic of which VLAN we're tracking is with the encapsulation statement right there. So this subinterface FA00.33, because of the statement we just put in just now, is now focused on the VLAN 3 tag with dot one q. And then we'll give it an IP address. IP address, this will be 20.0.0.200, actually 100, because that's what the PC is expecting. And there we go. Let's just do a couple commands to verify what we've done. Let's do a show IP interface brief. And you'll notice we have the physical interface still doesn't have an IP address, that's okay. But the sub interface, FA00.2, it does have an IP address. And FA0033 also has an IP address in a, what's, that's appropriate for the other devices in that network, what they're expecting. So one other thing we should do is this. Let's do a show run. And I show you the interface config so you can see them as well. So here is our two here are our two sub interfaces configured and again it's the encapsulation statement that tells those sub interfaces what VLAN to participate in. So right now this router should be able to ping both PCs if I've configured everything correctly. So we'll go ahead and do a ping of 10.0.0.10. And that is working. If we did it a second time, it doesn't time out based on the ARP. And we'll also do a ping of 20.0.0.20 and that one should make it as well okay now the trick is can we ping from the PC on the VLAN 10 or VLAN 2 which is the top PC right here can we ping from him um, down to this PC if they both have a default gateway of the router the router is directly connected to both we should have full connectivity so let's go to the top PC I'll open up that window We'll do a IP config just to verify that we are looking at the device we think we are. So there's the IP address of 10.0.0.10 and the default gateway is the router's IP address and we'll do a ping to 20.0.0.20. And that's working. Let's also do a trace. A trace would be a good idea too. So we'll do a trace to 20.0.0.20 and it's not a router so I need to do trace RT because that's what it would be in a Windows box and there you notice it takes the first hop which is the router and then the router forwards it on to the final destination and that's it a router on a stick really simple to set up the key part is to understand what's going on and from a logical topology perspective it's one physical interface if you look at that router it looks like it has only one you know physical connection that's the stick part with router on a stick. It's like a one-arm bandit in Vegas. Just, you know, there's like one connection in there. So that's how you set up router on a stick. I appreciate you watching and have a great, great day.